So, can I explain why Philippine families are so large? Because obviously we had them in Europe as well, um, but it's only what, the last hundred years you sort of get the two point two point one children or whatever it is that exists in the UK. It's got more to do with religion than anything else. Um, it's why even in the UK you still see large families from certain devout religious groups. Um, the Philippines, the same as anywhere else in the world, used to be a large farming existence. As such, it was tied to the fact that if you had a lot of sons and even daughters, they could work the farm because the more people you got, the more um, people could work the farm. You've also got the issues relating to disease because obviously if you've got five or seven kids, if a couple of die because of malaria or something, the family is still going to continue. There is no sort of social welfare in the sense of something similar to the UK, etc. So the kids would then become responsible for their parents in old age. There's a lot of reasons the families were big. And the problem is now a lot of the reasons aren't really there anymore, but they're still very big. And this is why I say sort of it's combined with history as well as um, religion. Because in religion, there's this go forth and breed and spread the word and all this sort of stuff. Uh, you've got the, the health bill, which I'm still unaware of, even that's been passed yet. There's been so much anti-health um, stuff relating to contraception that I'm I'm not even sure this even got past the law yet because I just got fed up with watching the religious stuff being pushed as like, oh, it's evil or this. I can't be bothered with it. You know, I'm for people being able to think for themselves. As soon as they start becoming drones to something, it's why we have the world we have today because people stop thinking and start believing the crap they're told. Um... So that has a major influence because people don't use contraception. This also means that the numbers relating to STDs is still not a real number because people don't really want to talk about the real figures because it still connects the other dots relating to um, things like the adult industry and the fact that no contraceptives are used so as such std numbers are high and then you'd have to look at how to prevent them and then it, it gets in a loop so none of this stuff really gets covered properly but it does have to sit at the forefront of religion religion has too much influence in the philippines um i'm not one for being anti-religion but when it actually manipulates things to suit itself, it's a problem. Um, and I, like I said, it's not just Christianity. The other religions do the same. It's why when you go in the UK to somebody that is from one of those other groups, um, they normally have 7 or 11 kids themselves because in religion, that's the way they are. It's just that, oh, I... I you. You're asking somebody who's not religious. I just do not get it. Um, I understand having so many kids because of the risk of disease, etc. So the, the high mortality rate means that people breed more because they're looking to maintain an existence. So they're sort of fighting against the tide of disease. But when it comes to just religion, doing it for its own viewpoint is a very strange thing. Um, because I've, I've talked with people on this that are from religious backgrounds and they become, you know, they either get it or they're so blinkered to their own viewpoint that they refuse to accept it. It's a bit like when people say that they are taught to go and teach religion to others. They're supposed to preach it to others, to bring other people into the fold. I tell them straight to their face. It's like, I'm not telling you not to believe your religion. I'm telling you to respect my boundaries that I don't want to hear it. Um, I'm not interested. I'm really not interested. And I'm not telling you to um, not talk about your religion. I'm just saying, do not talk to me about it. I'm not interested. It's like... But for some people, they find that, oh, you can't do that. This is my religion. I've got a right to tell you. And it's like, you have no right. You're not respecting my boundaries. So it's a very strange thing. 
And this is why when I put the comment when somebody asked me, could I explain it? I already know that there's going to be some people within the religious group. They're going to leave some strange comments because they always do. Um, but that's why even Duterte has brought this up relating to the excess families, um, the size of the families. He's already brought it up recently um, about the way the church encourages it because it creates these problems now. See, I'm trying to separate my own view on why they do it from the fact that they say it's part of expanding the church. Um, because a lot of this goes back to then, see, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do this diplomatically. Um, a lot of it is down to the fact that if you create poverty, people are more interested in things like religion. Um, so if you're actually creating a foundation, then there's more, it's more likely you're going to get a stronger following. If people are all happy, and this is why you find in the Western world, a lot of people are not engaged in the church in the same way. They may still say they're religious, they may go on a Sunday or whatever, um, but at the same time, they're not as devout as people that are often from a poor, poor background. Um, so if you can create poverty, sometimes it has a good effect for the church. Not saying that's in all cases, but I do think there is some of that that goes on. Um, because I think if you have a stable economy, stable jobs, low poverty levels, you know, there's, uh, sorry, little poverty in the country, etc. Um, people get more interested in things like going to McDonald's or watching a movie than going to the church. In my personal opinion. Thanks for watching.